Assalamu alaikum guys welcome okay so now we are going to talk about a very important section of period 3 that is the trend of melting points of all these elements okay this is a very high yield topic literally a very high yield topic because you will find only from this diagram you can find like five questions okay just on this board all right so this is that important and not uh, one mark questions rather uh, three to four mark questions okay so th this is gonna be a very very important discussion so let's begin all right so now sodium magnesium aluminum silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine and argon now what do you guys think which of these will have the highest melting point and why that's the question basically explain describe and explain the trend of melting points basically is that's the actually the question so first of all sodium magnesium aluminum sodium magnesium aluminum as you go from sodium to aluminum this is the first part of the question silicon itself is a, a question phosphorus till argon is a separate question so three questions and the fourth question is this graph this diagram basically you are asked to actually draw the diagram okay so this is important sodium has uh, a particular melting point magnesium will have a higher melting point i'll explain why okay then aluminum will have a slightly higher melting point than magnesium and then silicon will have the highest melting point i'll explain why then phosphorus after silicon phosphorus has the uh, a lower melting point as compared to sodium and magnesium then comes sulfur then chlorine then argon and sulfur has a higher melting point in phosphorus why that's also a question this is the fourth question you have why is sulfur above phosphorus and then comes chlorine and then comes argon so now let's explain why is that so first part is this one sodium magnesium aluminum sodium uh, followed by magnesium and then followed by aluminum why is aluminum having the highest melting point and why is sodium having the least melting point first of all guys what is the type of bonding on which the melting point depends in these three metals it's the metallic bonding right so this is the first thing metallic bonding now this is the first key term and this is the first mark for okay first mark is actually given for the metallic bonding second term is that as you go from sodium to magnesium to aluminum the valence shell electrons increase right valence shell electrons they increase from one to three right sodium has only one valence shell electron aluminum has three valence shell electrons now the valence shell electrons they are donated to the sea of delocalized electrons donated to the sea of delocalized electrons sea of delocalized electrons since aluminum aluminum donates the greatest number of electrons since aluminum it donates the greatest number of electrons to the sea of delocalized electron therefore aluminum has the strongest metallic bonds right metallic bonds and so greatest energy is needed to overcome the metallic bonds present in aluminum that's the reason so what are the marks for over here first of all uh, you have to mention that the uh, melting points of all these three elements depends upon the metallic bonding present inside of them as we go from sodium to aluminum the number of valence shell electrons increase the valence shell electrons are provided to the outer to the sea of delocalized electrons in the metallic bonds so the gr uh, greatest number of um, valence shell electrons are provided by aluminum therefore the strongest attraction exists in aluminum and so the greatest energy is needed to overcome the melting point the metallic bonds present in aluminum that's the answer that's complete and that's the reason behind it clear then after aluminum comes silicon sometimes the examiner um, asks you that why is silicon having the highest melting point why why is that so meaning not above uh, just aluminum but rather the highest even above the non-metals and the metals and everything else why is that so the reason behind that is because you guys might already know this answer by the way silicon remember a compound of silicon which we did previously in covalent bonding silicon dioxide SiO2 remember SiO2 SiO2 has giant covalent structure same is the case with silicon silicon also has a giant covalent structure giant covalent structure means it has thousands and thousands of bonds covalent bonds uh, of silicon bonded with one another basically i'll draw the structure of silicon uh, in silicon basically each silicon atom is bonded to four other silicon atom which in turn are bonded to four more silicon atoms and so you get a tetrahedral structure of uh, and the bond angle is of course going to be 109.5 degrees the shape is going to be tetrahedral tetra 
hydrohedral and it has a giant covalent structure giant covalent structure and so if if it has a giant covalent structure then that means a lot of covalent bonds need to be broken down before it could be molten right before it could melt so therefore it will it would require the greatest amount of heat energy or greatest amount of energy to break the covalent bonds all the covalent bonds present in silicon in order to melt it down so that's why that's the major reason that's the answer to the question why the silicon has the highest melting point because silicon has the giant covalent structure a lot of there are many many covalent bonds a high the highest amount of energy is needed to overcome them as compared to other elements which are present over here then phosphorus sulfur chlorine and argon these four elements have a separate question actually they have two separate questions okay so now phosphorus sulfur chlorine and argon now sulfur has the highest melting point followed by phosphorus followed by chlorine and then finally argon this is the reason why the melting point of sulfur is the highest because sulfur naturally exists in the form of s8 molecule okay as an octamer okay sulfur has eight sulfur atoms bonded to one another one two three four five six seven eight okay it actually has eight sulfur atoms bonded to one another due to which what happens sorry about that due to which each um, the, the number the amount of covalent bonds which are present in sulfur are more as compared to actually no 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 sorry 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 guys big mistake it's not the covalent bonds in case of sulfur phosphorus chlorine and argon it's not the covalent bonds on which the melting point depends any suggestion which forces are responsible for the melting point in these elements chlorine and argon let me just hint you over here these are non-polar non-polar compounds and if these are non-polar compounds that means it's the van der Waal forces which are responsible for the melting points in these uh, elements okay first mark is for this statement over here first mark is to explain that sulfur has eight atoms in each molecule phosphorus has four chlorine has two and argon has a single molecule second mark is s8 has the highest mr remember van der Waal forces depend upon the mr right and if it has the highest mr then it must have the highest number of polarizable electrons remember polarizable electrons from the previous lecture of van der Waal forces intermolecular forces okay s8 has the highest number of polarizable electrons therefore s8 has the strongest van der Waal forces strongest vdw forces and if it has the strongest van der Waal forces then of course the greatest amount of energy will be needed to overcome them in case of sulfur and therefore it will have the greatest melting point and there is also most of the times there is an additional mark for stating that the melting point of these elements melting point it actually depends depends upon the van der Waal forces okay for just this statement there is sometimes a mark is actually available okay so it's better to write down everything so the first mark is for this comparison that s8 is greater than phosphorus is greater than cl2 and this is greater than argon then mentioning that sulfur has the greatest mr okay and the greatest number of polarizable electrons therefore it will have the strongest van der Waal forces and so the greatest amount of energy will be needed to overcome the sulfur the um, intermolecular forces in case of sulfur and this completes our discussion on melting points trend okay quick recap sodium magnesium aluminum aluminum has the highest and um, by the way there is just one last question which is left over here from sodium to magnesium and magnesium to aluminum this difference in the melting points I'll explain that in the next video okay but before that um, everything else has been completed I'll just do a quick recap of what we've done so far and then we'll move on to the next lecture so from sodium to magnesium to aluminum the, uh, the melting point increases because of the increase in the strength of the metallic bonds and then from aluminum to silicon silicon has the highest because it has a giant covalent structure and most energy is needed to overcome that then from phosphorus 
Phosphorus has lower energy than silicon because it has van der Waals forces and silicon has covalent bonds which are stronger. Then sulfur has higher energy than higher melting point than phosphorus because sulfur actually has a greater MR. It exists as S8 and S8 has the greatest MR and the greatest number of polarizable electrons. So greatest amount of energy would be needed to overcome them. Um, so strongest van der Waals forces basically. Then coming to chlorine which has a lower MR and then argon the least MR. So least van der Waals forces meaning the weakest van der Waals forces. This completes it. We are going to discuss this difference in the next lecture and then we are going to move on. Thank you.